Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You know, I believe that being a prisoner of hope releases you from other prisons. The Apostle Paul was a prison of religion. And if you read the New Testament, Paul now says, I, a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I used to be a prisoner of negativity and doubt. I was a prisoner of my past. I was a prisoner of all the years of abuse that I had gone through. And I thought, nothing good can ever happen to me. And you're just making a mistake if you expect it to, because all you're going to get is disappointed. And now I am so full of hope and just expect God to do Every day I believe God for favor in my life. And I just wait to see how God shows up and shows out. What have you lost? During all the years that you didn't know the truth of God's word. How many years have you wasted? Have you lost your identity? Do you not know who you are in Christ? Do you spend your time feeling guilty and condemned and depressed and discouraged and downtrodden? Have you lost your confidence? Do you know who you are in Christ? Have you lost your friends, your job, your childhood, your mind? <laughs> My childhood was stolen from me. I never got to be a kid. That's tough when you don't ever get to be a kid. And I, I don't remember ever just being a happy, carefree, I never felt safe, ever. Never. Thank you. But you know what? I'm just having so much fun now that I can hardly stand myself. I mean, I'm a 69-year-old kid. Woohoo! Now, you know what? Just about the time you start to think, well, you know what? What she's saying makes sense. You start to feel just a little bit of hope starting to bubble in there, then you might as well expect it. The devil is going to attack. <laughs> And he comes in a different way than he did before. <laughs> oh. I got to fight the good fight of faith and I got to get my hope back because if I have my hope back. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> I want you to go home with one of these. <laughs> Amen. If you need to, make it your bathroom. And when everything that you look at looks like destruction, you just go get in that bathroom, run the water, flush the toilet so you can't hear the kids and say, I believe that God is going to do something amazing in my life. <laughs> Isaiah 61, 7. This message this morning is not complicated. I've gone over it four or five times, and I thought, well, am I, is this deep enough? Let me tell you something. This is deep as I'm going this morning. Get a good attitude. <laughs> Have some positive thoughts. Say something good. If you leave this meeting today, and you go to lunch with a bunch of people, and you sit there and do nothing but talk about your problems the whole time you're at lunch, I hope somebody hears you and just comes and slaps you. <laughs> I mean, I want you talking about, there is no telling us what God is going to do in my life. I tell you what, I'm going to be a prisoner of hope and I'm going to get double my trouble. Amen. Isaiah 61, 7. Oh, 
My gosh, this kept me going for years when I just had so much pain in my soul trying to get over the abuse that I went through, trying to learn how to be a submissive wife, trying to learn how to be nice. Oh my gosh. And I'd go back to Isaiah 61, 7. Instead of your farmer's shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. That means reward. Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Now watch this. It doesn't say, and when they finally go to heaven, they'll be blessed. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. What they forfeited and everlasting joy I know some of you have been sad some of you came to this conference saying God I gotta have a breakthrough you gotta speak something to me I need a word this is your word I'm telling you that every person can take this this is your word from God and anybody else that ever comes to you that needs help this can be their word from God there is nothing negative about our God everything he says is hopeful it's full of faith it's full of confidence you are no you are not the tail end of anything it's not too late for you God's got a good plan for your life and it's never too late to begin again double See, you just don't understand, and there's no way that I could ever make you understand what God has done for me. And you say, well, that must be nice for you. Well, see, that's just that attitude I'm trying to get rid of right there. <laughs> that's it right there. We just hit it on the head. Well, that must be nice for you. I'm glad that you're so blessed. <laughs> Caught you, didn't I? No, you know what you need to say? If God will do it for one person, he'll do it for me. I'm a whosoever, and God is no respecter of persons. When you see somebody else with victory, don't be resentful and jealous. Let it be an encouragement to you that if God can do it for them, God can do it for you. I don't even know how to talk about the changes in my life. But everything that I'm telling you guys that you need to do by the grace and the mercy of God, I had to do it. I didn't just get it sitting around wishing. You have to fight the good fight of faith. In Job 42, 10, we see that God restored double to Job everything that he had lost when he prayed for his friends and forgave them. Now, let me just say something quite serious to you right now. Don't expect any of this if you're going to stay mad at people. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to say it again. Don't expect this stuff to work in your life if you're going to have bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness, offense, and be mad at people. And the sad thing is I've ministered to people long enough to know that from what I can tell, about 80% of all Christians are mad. It's the truth. I've never been anywhere, never been to any church, never had any meeting where I have ever taught on unforgiveness or strife or any of that stuff, asked people to stand up the end so I could pray for them if they needed to forgive somebody. I've never had less than 70 to 80% of the whole congregation get on their feet. The first thing that God does for us is forgive us. And what God gives you, he expects you to give away. Don't give the devil your inheritance by staying mad at somebody that did something to you that doesn't even care if you're upset and they're out having a good time. You can do yourself a favor today. You can put this double blessing in action in your life by saying, I am not going to stay mad at anybody. It is not to my benefit to stay mad at anybody, and I want to see God's plan. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I release it, I let it go. You say, but it's not fair. <laughs> but if you do it, double, 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 double. How many of you understand clearly what I'm saying? This is not going to work for you if you're going to stay mad at somebody. Do you have that? 
It is not going to work for you if you're going to stay mad at somebody. And while I'm at it, let me just throw this out there. That includes you. You got to get over being mad at you. Well, I don't like myself. Name you. <laughs> Why don't you just get busy being you? You can't be somebody else. Everybody else is already taken. <laughs> You're it. You're stuck with you. Let's just make the best out of it. Amen. The way out of any prison, the way out of any prison is to become a prisoner of hope. I love that. Jesus said he came to open prison doors. The door's open. You got to walk out. And the way out of any prison is to become a prisoner of hope. To get in here and say, something good is going to happen to me. I'm expecting, I'm like a pregnant woman that's about 25 years overdue. I tell you what, I'm expecting today may be my day. I'm going to deliver today. I'm going to give birth today. I can't wait to see what good thing God does in my life. Amen. Amen. Don't you like my little jail cell? I think that's so cute. Full of these little flowers. Double blessings don't come to the double-minded. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to write a new book. <laughs> Won't get around to this one for a couple of years, but I, what do you think of this for a book title? Make your mind up and stop changing it. Now, it's mine, so don't anybody else get the bright idea that you're going to steal it. Make your mind up and stop changing it. You know, we, you're, make, you're making, the, you, you, you agree with what I'm saying? You're like, this is it. This is it. <laughs> I got to change my attitude. I got to get positive. I got to start talking positive. I got to agree with God. That's it. Prison of hope. That's what I need. <laughs> and then when you go home, and the kids didn't clean the house like you told them to? And your husband's still in the recliner? <laughs> didn't clean out the garage you told him to clean out? Nobody did anything you asked them to do? The house a mess? You walk in, they wonder, what are you going to cook for dinner? <laughs> now, you're about to change your mind. You're about to get a new mindset. <laughs> This stuff, man, that don't work for me. Nobody could live here and have any kind of an attitude of hope. No, the double-minded don't get the double blessing. It's easy to have this work in here. It's when you go home that you're going to have to apply this. Come on, folks, you got to go home. I'm sorry to tell you, but you got to go home. You know, the people that Jesus touched, a lot of them said, oh, let me just follow you and I'll just, just be with you now. And he said, go home and show them what a great thing I've done in your life. You got to go home and show people that you've changed. Don't just take them the CDs. Go home and show them that you've changed. <laughs> Amen. Ooh, I like my preaching today. The double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Do not let that man even think that he will receive anything that he asks for from the Lord. I love Colossians 3, 1, set your mind and keep it set. Now, how many of you understand what I'm saying today? It's good for you to make a decision in here, but I want to make sure that you're going to keep your mind made up. Make your mind up that God has a good plan for you. This is not for somebody else in the room. This is for you. You say, Joyce, you just don't know how bad I'm hurting. I mean, I had a woman come up to me out in the mall the other day, and she said, you're Joyce Meyer, right? And I said, yeah. She said, could you pray for me? I said, what do you need? She said, I've been, my husband and I are missionaries. We adopted a child from the mission field. My husband just came home after 14 years of marriage and said he's leaving. He don't want to be married anymore. You know what? That kind of stuff is just, 
it is hard beyond what anybody even knows to be hard I know that many of you are hurting and I don't want my little happy clappy message to sound like it's not for you I'm telling you this is real hope is powerful hope is real hope will put you over but you got to make your mind up and not change it I don't know I mean it you know the devil attacks I mean when we when we try to do anything that's good you're trying to make your mind up that you're going to go home and you're going to have a good attitude and I can almost tell you and I hate to do it that when you go home the devil's going to come against you he's going to nah. <laughs> when are you going to give it up this is my new home <laughs> You know, last week we had all kinds of stuff happening. And, you know, day one I said, well, it's women's conference week. The devil is alive and well on planet Earth and he hates us. He came against Jesus. And the Bible says he tested and tested and tested and tested. And after he went through every test, he went away to wait for a more favorable and opportune time. It's in Luke chapter 4. And I don't mean that like all you're going to do is fight the devil. That's not true. But there will be times when you're going to have to stand your ground. And I'll tell you when you have to stand your ground the most, when you're taking new ground. New level, new devil. Come on, when you're taking new ground. Let's just say you're making this decision today. I am going to enjoy my life. You know, I made a decision about 15 years ago. I'm going to enjoy my life. And I remember standing on my stairway one day, yelling out loud in my house at the devil, I am going to enjoy my life. Because if you've been a prisoner of hopelessness for a long time, the enemy is going to try to drag you back into that. You say, well, you know, I just had a problem with depression all my life. Well, you know what? Depression can be a very real thing. And it's caused for a lot of different reasons. If it's a medical depression, get some help. If it's some kind of an imbalance in your body, get some help. If you live on junk all the time, learn how to take care of yourself. Get some sleep. But if it's just some kind of a spiritual thing, a bad attitude, living off of bad thoughts, negative thoughts, negative conversation, then here's my answer. Stop it. I wish I had something deeper, but that's it. Get up every day, start with prayer. God, I cannot do this without you, but I refuse. I refuse to be hopeless. You know, Nancy Alcorn comes every year and we love her with the Mercy Ministries homes. And we've had our home here in St. Louis now for seven years. And she told me last night that 400 girls have gone through that home. And had their lives restored. And I, you know, I, where, where's all the mercy girls? Where you, where you go? So they're over there. Love you girls. Now here's the thing. You know, a lot of them, they've all been hurt. They've been wounded. There's eating disorders and unplanned pregnancies and, and sexual abuse in their past and drug addiction and alcohol addiction. And I mean, just in that one little section, there's no telling how much pain is in this room. But I'm here to tell you that God will give you double for your trouble. If you will become a prisoner of hope and don't let anybody take that away from you. And what they have to do is say, I refuse to let the devil ruin my whole life. He may have stolen the first 20 years, but he's not getting any more. How many of you feel a little fire in your belly today? That's it, devil, I've had enough. I'm going to take back what's mine. Make your mind up that God is good, that he's got a good plan for you, and that you're going to have it. Everybody say, God is good. He's got a good plan for me. Now this part you got to say really loud, and I'm going to have it. Now remember... You can't do it just on the good days. You got to do it especially. This is especially important on the not so good days. Can't just do it when you feel like it. 
You have to do it especially when you don't feel like it. Amen? Amen. Romans 5, 2 through 5. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, it says in Proverbs. Everything about the devil is something down, 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 down. You know, a lot of the D words he brings, discouragement, devastation, despair, depression, <laughs> death. But Jesus is our glory and the lifter. The lifter of our head. Now, through him also we have our access, our entrance, our introduction by faith into this grace, the state of God's favor in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hopelessness. No. Let us rejoice in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. Of God. You know what the glory of God is? It's the manifestation of all the goodness of God in your life. The manifestation, the bringing out in the open where it can be seen, all of the goodness of God in your life. Everybody shout, something good is going to happen to me. Now let's look at the next verse. Romans 5. Moreover, let us also be full of joy. When? When? Oh, you mean I got to get full of joy before I get the breakthrough? Yeah. Mm. Let us also be full of joy now. Let us exalt and triumph when? In our troubles. And rejoice where? In our sufferings. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Joyce. You didn't tell me this part. <laughs> I saved it till the end so I could tell you and get out of here. Look at me, it's not all going to be easy, but oh my gosh, is it going to be worth it. Oh my goodness, the life that God has waiting for you is so much better than anything you could even possibly begin to imagine. Don't you give up and faint in the fire. Let's put it back up. Let us be full of joy now. Let us exalt and triumph in our troubles. You say, well, I just don't feel very joyful. I just can't help the way I feel. I've already told you what to do. But I'll go over it again if you're slow. <laughs> Get your mind off yourself. Go do something nice for somebody else. Be a blessing everywhere you go. Talk positive. Put a smile on your face. Go to the mirror every morning and smile at yourself. Maybe that'll get you jump started for the day. Let us rejoice in our troubles and in our sufferings, knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship produce patient and unswerving endurance. And endurance develops maturity of character. Can I tell you something? When you have to go through something hard, that's when you grow spiritually. We don't get our spiritual maturity when we're getting everything that we want. We get it when not much is going the way that we want it to and we choose to do the right thing anyway. And character of this sort produces the habit. I love this, the habit. Joy can become a habit. The habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Last verse, verse 5. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Ghost. Now, wait a minute. Such hope never disappoints us. Well, Joyce, I've been disappointed before. What does that mean? Hope of this kind never dis disappoints us. Well, you know what? We may get disappointed over a certain thing, but we can never get disappointed over the whole thing if we see things through to the end. What's the worst thing that could possibly happen if you're believing God for something? You won't get it. You won't get what you wanted, but if you don't stop hoping, you will get what God wants you to have. And while you're waiting, you'll be happy. You know, I've decided for me, somewhere along the line, you have to make your mind up about your believing and where you're going to put your faith. And you know, you have all these people out in the world that say that 
you know, God's not real and we just all need a crutch, something to lean on and yada, yada. Of course, I don't believe that, but you know, every once in a while, you ever, you ever have that thought, what if I spend my whole life doing this? And <laughs> I mean, you know, those are devil thoughts, but you know, I mean, I, every once in a while, one will just float by and I'm like, Killing myself, preaching to all these people all the time. But here's what I've decided for me. <laughs> if I get all the way to the end and find out I wasted my time, at least I was happy doing it. <laughs> so you can do what you want to, but for me, I've decided to stay happy, and this is the only way that I know how to do it. I got to be full of hope. I got to believe God's word. I've got to expect that something good is going to happen to me every day. I cannot wait to see what God does in my life today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. I am a prisoner of hope. You know, many people feel hopeless about their lives and their circumstances, but the Bible teaches us that God is the author of hope. So as believers, we can expect God's best to come out of every situation. No matter what you're going through, stay full of hope.